Have you been doing everything you can to lose weight, maintain your health, and reduce stress but find that nothing is working? Well, you could be doing this one big thing that is sabotaging all of your efforts. Find out in this video. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into my channel. My name is Lena, founder of Jaded Nutrition. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about sleep. Now sleep is one of the most important things that we can do for our body to maintain our health, lose weight, and reduce stress. A lot of people think that eating and sleep have nothing to do with each other, but they actually have everything to do with each other. Now if we're not getting enough sleep, the tendency is going to be to overeat during the day. We're trying to get that energy back that we've lost from not having enough sleep, and it's very easy to gravitate towards food. We gravitate towards things that are high in sugar and things that are high in refined carbs for that quick energy that they give us. So if we don't get enough sleep, a lot of the time, we tend to overeat and we don't overeat things that aid in weight loss. So this is the big correlation between lack of sleep and weight gain. It's gonna be extremely difficult for you to lose weight if you're not getting proper sleep. Now why would someone not get enough sleep? There's so many different reasons for people not being able to sleep properly. They could be physical reasons, they could be emotional reasons, they could be spiritual reasons. On the physical side, maybe you're not getting enough sleep because you're not going to bed early enough. There's a lot of research that says people who go to bed later than 11 o'clock at night do not get as deep a sleep and they don't get as quality a sleep as people that go to bed before 11 o'clock at night. A lot of the time, we stay up in the evening watching TV, so we're extra stimulated before we go to bed from the backlight being on from either a computer screen or a television screen, plus whatever we're watching stimulates our brain activity and it makes, us very, and it, makes it very challenging for us to fall asleep. And if we go to bed at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and then we're getting up at seven o'clock in the morning, we're not getting those really, really high quality hours of sleep that we could be getting. So one of the biggest things that I tell people, if you want to get a better quality of sleep, you have to have the lights out before 11 o'clock. You have to make sure that you turn off all of your screens at least, at least half an hour before you go to bed, but more so an hour before you go to bed to reduce some of that brain stimulation and activity that happens from looking at a screen. So have a bedtime routine that you set up. My husband and I like to read before bed and we talk a little bit, so we have at least half an hour where we're not thinking about anything that's overly stimulating and we're letting ourselves wind down so we can get a high quality good night's sleep. There's so many different reasons that can cause us emotionally to not be able to sleep well. Now when we're under emotional stress, we are in a fight, flight, freeze response. So our body is secreting a ton of these stress hormones that make it very difficult for us to fall asleep. Not only that, our minds are racing when we go to bed with all of these worries and cares and it's very difficult to fall asleep. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of emotional stress going on in my life, writing a book, which I'm super excited about, conferences that I'm gonna be speaking about, some family issues. There's been a lot of emotional stress that's caused me to not be able to sleep well. This has been affecting my mood, my energy, because I haven't been getting enough sleep. When I go to bed, it's very hard for me to turn off my brain because there's a million things that come into it and I can't shut it off. Now, one of the biggest things that we can do to stop that or at least combat it a little bit is to practice mindfulness. So a lot of the time, we're living in fear, thinking about the future, 
or we're living in depression thinking about the past. We're never just fully here. We're in the future or we're in the past. And when we lay down in bed at night, our minds are racing. I could have done this. What am I going to do now? Instead of just being, instead of letting yourself sleep, our minds go in either direction. Now, one of the biggest things we can do to help this, like I said, is practicing mindfulness. So when you're lying in bed, I want you to think about five things that you can see. Now, if it's dark, that might be a little bit more difficult, but five things that you can see. Then after that, think about five things that you can feel. And after that, think about five things that you can hear. Start to get into your surroundings and practice presence. This will help to turn off the back of our brain and to light up the front of our brain that's responsible for reasoning and clarity and to help bring us back down. So it's a technique that I learned and it is amazing to bring you back down whenever you're feeling really stressed, but also when you need to sleep. So practicing mindfulness, if you're experiencing a lot of emotional stress before you go to bed, is a really great way to bring that down. Another reason that you could not be getting a good sleep is you're eating too close before bed. I personally try to stop eating anywhere from three to four hours before I go to bed to help my body prepare for sleep and not focus on digestion. When we go to bed, the last thing we want for our body to be focusing on is digesting food that we ate an hour ago. You want to give your body time after you've eaten dinner to digest your food so when you go to bed, you can focus on sleep. Your body's not working against itself to sleep by digesting the food that you just ate. This will dramatically impact the quality of your sleep if you go to bed just a little bit hungry. Not starving, because that might not help you sleep either, but go to bed just a little bit hungry. So when you wake up, you should be hungry and ready to eat. If you're not, it means you ate too much before you went to bed. If you're a person that likes to snack at night or even gets up in the middle of the night to have a snack, this is really affecting your ability to get a good quality night's sleep. This is a huge no-no if sleep is an issue for you and even more so if weight loss is an issue for you. If you want to lose weight, the last thing you want to do is be getting up in the middle of the night when your metabolism is at its lowest to be eating something and then going back to sleep where you're not moving and you're not digesting it properly. So if you wanna lose weight and if you want a good quality night's sleep, stop eating before bed three to four hours and do not wake up in the middle of the night and go and have a snack. Grandpa, this is for you. There are so many different reasons why people don't get a good night's sleep. You could be a new mom and have a baby that wakes up every three hours. You could have a new puppy that wakes up every three hours. You could work night shifts and so your sleep schedule and your circadian rhythm is completely off. Whatever it is, just realize that sleep trumps everything. In terms of eating healthy, exercising and sleeping properly, Sleep trumps everything. If you're not sleeping well, you're not going to end up eating well. You're gonna remain in a stress response and you're gonna go throughout your day exhausted. You're probably gonna reach for more food and it's gonna be foods that are high in sugar and refined carbs to keep giving you that spike of energy throughout the day. But it's gonna make you crash even more and it's gonna not help you sleep later on. When we eat a high quality diet, that will help us sleep better because our body is getting the nutrients that it needs. So sleep and food have everything to do with one another. We can also reduce our stress when we sleep properly. Now when we're not sleeping properly, we're in that stress response and our ability to think clearly and reason literally goes out the window. So if you're really stressed out, and you're not sleeping, you're gonna, you're gonna continue to be even more stressed out. It's a really vicious cycle, so you have to do everything that you can to get a good night's rest. 
turn off the lights at a reasonable time. I usually say around 10.30, but for sure before 11. Stop eating before bed. Turn off all of your screens an hour before. Get a bedtime routine where you're reading a book. Maybe you're washing your face, you're brushing your teeth, you're talking, you're doing a devotion, maybe you're praying, you're meditating. Do something that calms you down. Practice that exercise where you're coming into your surroundings, you're being present, and you're letting all of the day's stress go. When you sleep properly, your whole life is better. Your mood is better, your diet is better, you have more energy to exercise to get through the day. Sleep is so important. I can't stress it enough. What have you done that helps you sleep better? I'd love to know below. Please leave me a comment, like this video, share it, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jaded Nutrition. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.